What's going on everyone, it's Justin here, and today I'm here to show you what I have in my travel bag for 2019. So whether it comes to tech, just some things that I take around, and what I take kind of on the plane and traveling around the world, as in the past couple months, it's just been absolutely crazy. And I've been really lucky to check out some cool destinations, including Paris, Switzerland, also head to New York, Toronto, LA, San Francisco. But if you guys haven't checked them out, I'll leave a link to all the travel films down below to each destination. So just a couple years ago, I had never traveled on my own. I'd only traveled with my parents, and the first few times was definitely a bit of a learning experience, but I think especially in the past year of traveling a ton with all of the tech companies to releases and stuff, I really tried to optimize my pack and tried to bring all the things that I need, feel like are very useful, but also try to keep it as light as possible because as a tech guy and as someone who loves clothes and shoes, I end up overpacking almost every single trip, no matter how many times I've traveled and realized that I don't actually use most of the stuff that I bring. So as always, all the products are gonna be linked down below and if you guys would like to win an item from this video, just make sure you subscribe to the channel, drop a like on this video and also leave a comment down below and I'll be picking a winner when this video hits 3000 likes. The bag itself that I currently use when it comes to travel is the Gucci canvas and honestly I wanted it for a while when I got it and after I purchased it I actually didn't use it for quite a while because I wasn't sure if I exactly liked the way it looked. But the reason why I like this is because it is nice and simple, it's not too loud for a designer bag. But there is also all the compartments that you're going to need including one on the front so I've got like my iPad and my earbuds so I can take them out very quickly. I've got my passport pocket on the inside, there is also a zipper pocket, a quick one on the top here for just some basic accessories and stuff like that, your wallet. And on the side you also have a few pouches as well so most designer bags are made out of leather and they don't have any pockets or anything but this one right here has most of the pockets that I'm going to need and in terms of comfort it definitely isn't the best but in terms of looks I think it looks pretty simple and you either like it or you don't. So the first and most important thing in my bag is the 2018 iPad Pro and the reason for this is pretty obvious. I do have to go on a lot of long flights because I live pretty far from a lot of the places we have to travel. So five hours, nine hours, 10 hour flights are pretty regular. So being able to consume all the media that I would like and do some notes and a little bit of work on it is great to do on the iPad Pro. I really like that Apple has kind of squared off the design a little bit in the redesign and I think it just overall looks really good with the screen going edge to edge. The battery life is really good and after using it for six or seven hours of playback, I still have like 50% left. I did also buy the Apple Pencil too, but I don't really find myself using it that much aside from occasional photo retouching. But one thing that I don't like about this iPad is the fact that it doesn't have a headphone jack. So it's not really because of the headphone jack itself, but it's because with my iPhone I don't have a headphone jack, so I have the lightning adapter. But because this iPad uses USB Type-C, then I have to carry around two adapters to use noise cancelling earbuds with this iPad. The next most important product that I really really have to have on every trip now is the noise cancellation earbuds from Bose. So this is their second generation and what I like about it is the fact that obviously it does cancel noise because if you're using AirPods for example on a loud flight then it doesn't really plug out all the noise so if you're listening to dialogue in movies then you definitely want to have something like this and it just gives you a nice seal and fit and you just turn this on right here and it will cancel out essentially all of the buzzing noise. The battery life on it is very solid and typically lasts me a couple trips. You also have your volume controls right here, but the only thing is obviously it isn't fully wireless, so that is like the only complaint that I have and I do have to use the adapter for pretty much every device that I have, but as a pair of earbuds that are great for noise cancellation because I don't exactly like over your headphones, this is very good for long flights, but it definitely doesn't come in cheap. I think the next most important thing though for any travel bag is a power pack. So this one right here is from Anchor. It is 10,000 million hours and they do make them in a few different kind of shapes and sizes. You've got the larger ones. You've also got one that is more squared off and a little bit smaller, but it is quite a bit thicker and it does also hold 10,000 million hours. So I find for my travel bag, I like this one the most. It fits well in a pocket. You also have your battery indicator levels right here, which as you can see, I do need to go and charge this. And you have one port on the end, which for the most part, it's just one cable hanging out of it. As for phones, my daily driver is still the iPhone XS Max and I have all my communications, email, apps, and pretty much everything on this, including my boarding pass. But I also find that I do need to take an Android device on most trips because if we are attending an Android phone launch, it is best to tweet on an Android phone and also the camera on the Google Pixel is amazing. So this right here is Google Pixel 3a and it isn't exactly because it's the fastest, most premium phone on the market, but the reason why I like it is as a second phone, it is one of the lightest that I have. Because the 3A is made out of plastic, it is very nice to carry around and hold. So most of the time I'm doing some admin work such as Twitter, Dropbox, and taking some photos. So I don't exactly need the fastest processor and the one in here is able to keep up just fine. 
On the Android side though, I do often switch around, but my daily driver is still the iPhone just because it's what I'm used to and kind of the ecosystem that I'm currently in. So when it comes to the computer mouse that I prefer to use on travel, this is definitely not the best option when it comes to travel because of the size, but I honestly don't mind carrying it around. I just throw it in my bag and it is kind of bulky. It's a Logitech MX Master 2S, which is also my daily driver mouse for editing and desktop setup. It's just very ergonomic, has the horizontal scrolling. It's very fast for the stuff that I do. And they also have the MX Anywhere 2S mouse, which is easier to carry around and it's also lighter, but I honestly just take this around and I have no problem with it. So when it comes to on-the-go storage, this is probably the most important thing when it comes to what I have at home as well as on-the-go, and that is storage. More specifically, fast storage, and this right here is a G-Technology R-Series, and it comes in at up to 2 terabytes. and because it is a solid-state drive, it gives you speeds up to 560 megabytes per second. If you guys didn't know already, I shoot on the Canon 1DX2 in 4K, and there's just a ton of footage that takes up lots of space, as well as footage now from the RED. So being able to back up the clips right away and also do some editing on a portable drive, it's very important to have fast and reliable storage on the go. This one right here is also very durable with an IP67 rating which is water resistant as well as 3 meters in drops and although I don't really need that on an everyday basis, it is still a good peace of mind to have. It also actually looks pretty cool, it's got this soft touch finish on the outside, you've got that blue grille, the G Technology logo and also a metal piece on the top with your USB type C and the cables are all included. At this point I have a collection of drives at all different shapes and sizes and this one right here is kind of the sweet spot in being a good size but also nice and durable. So when it comes to computers that I currently use and like to bring on the go, one of my favorites is actually the Razer Blade Stealth 13 inch. So I haven't switched completely over to Windows just yet, but if I were to, then this computer is probably my favorite as well as a 15 inch model. I think Razer does an incredible job in the hardware design and performance and just the engineering of it. And the Chroma keyboard is also something that I think is such a good touch. Being someone who's used MacBooks for many years now, this is something that you can appreciate in the design that has gone into a Windows computer because a lot of them just don't seem to look that good. This 13 inch model has kind of a unibody design as well as a squirt off edge and flipping it open you've got a 4k display in the model that I have here which is also a touch screen and you also have your full-size keyboard and trackpad as well as the speakers on each side. What I like about it though is just this black stealth look that goes all the way around and the computer is just so well built. On the inside I have a quad core 8th generation Intel Core i7 processor paired with an Nvidia GeForce MX150 4GB GPU with 16 gigs of RAM and like I said a 13.3 inch 4K display. This one right here also has a 512 gig NVMe SSD though. But if you want to expand the storage, you can also do so on this computer and the one that I currently have is a Western Digital Black SN750. This gives you an additional 1 terabyte of fast storage and the max speed on the read is 3470 megabytes per second. As someone who always runs out of storage, whether it's on my portable drives and my internal drives, having the ability to upgrade that is just really nice on any computer. You also got two USB Type-C ports as well as one Thunderbolt 3, which is really nice to see in any 2019 model. And the whole computer just comes in at under three pounds and it's great for any sort of productivity, some graphics stuff, a little bit of video editing, even in 4K. But when it comes to gaming, even though this will give you a really good experience in some games or in medium settings, if you're really into gaming, you might want to look into some of the other models that Razer has. So before we move on to the next product, I want to give a huge thanks to the sponsor of this video, Hostinger. Whether you're looking to host a website, finding a server, or need a server for gaming, you can check out their hosting plans which have a whole different range of things that will suit your needs. It is fast, affordable, easy to use, and great for any business that is small or large, and as someone who's really trying to start doing some website stuff, it's kind of a place where I could talk about each trip, what was special about it, give you a behind the scenes look, and also post some of my photos that I took on these trips. I've been needing a fast hosting service and Hostinger has been there for me. So make sure you guys go ahead and check out their wide range of services and get 82% off your web hosting as well as a free domain by visiting the link hostinger.com slash justinsay. If you guys go ahead and use the coupon code justinsay, you can also get an additional 15% off your order and I'm going to leave a link to everything down below. The other computer that I also use as kind of a backup to my main MacBook, the 15 inch, is a 13 inch 2018 with quad core processor and this one does have the touch bar with four Thunderbolt 3 ports and overall it's a decent computer. It is a little bit expensive obviously being an Apple computer but I got this refurbished and with the quad core 16 gigs of RAM it is actually very capable and can edit 4K video surprisingly. Another very important piece that I take around that I often forget and it really sucks is my Anchor Power Brick which has four different ports on the back and the great thing is that it charges at a consistent fast speed. It's not the absolute fastest charging solution, I mean you can use the MacBook charger to charge the iPhone and speed that up a little bit, but it is still one of these all-in-one pieces and with many devices, four ports is just great to have. 
Moving on, this is kind of a product that isn't specific to travel, but great for everyday carry. So this is the Apple AirPods second generation. And yeah, nothing really much to say about it. They've been around for a while and they're great just to have something to listen to music to when you're walking around the airport. And even on some shorter flights where I'm just listening to some background music as opposed to watching a movie. And I find these actually more comfortable than my in-ear earbuds from Bose. The battery life from my experience lasts just around four to five hours. So on a relatively long flight, you should be okay. And if you need a quick charge, you just plug it in for 15 minutes and it'll give you about three hours. I think one of the cheapest, most underrated things that you have to have in any travel bag, whether you need it or not, is an eye mask. So on any flight, it might be very bright. The person next to you might turn on the lights. And if you just want a little bit of rest, I feel like it's almost impossible now without having an eye mask like this. And even though it doesn't look a little bit stupid, once you've flown a certain amount of times, you really don't care what people think. And on the plane, this has been something that I use every single trip. Because especially with all the long travel and the layovers, delay flights, uh, missed flights and stuff like that, it just seems like sleep is very, very hard to get and getting it on the plane is a dream. So the last thing that I have in my bag is a toiletry case. And I've gone through a couple of them in the past from Herschel, as well as one that I bought on eBay that was like the Ramoa inspired one. But Away has been making these ones seasonally and every time they release, they seem to sell out right away and people would put it on eBay for like a hundred bucks. But this right here I think was around $40 and it's got a little bit of a hard shell to it, which makes sure that your stuff doesn't get crushed and leaks as easily because I've had that happen in the past. So in here, you've got a lot of space to put all your stuff in. You've also got a little bit of a pouch on this side. And I think for a lot of trips where I don't really want to send a full luggage on the plane, then I can have all my toiletries that are packed in here and into my duffel bag as well. Some of the other little tips that I have are related to the apps that I have on my phone. And here are the couple ones that I use. I use Lyft and Uber, of course, to get around, but I also really like to use Seat Guru to kind of check which seats to pick on a plane and which one is going to be the best. Of course, the World Clock is also one that I use a lot, but also make sure you download all of the airlines that you travel with app on your phone, because a lot of times the media is going to be on there, whether it's movies, TV shows, easy access to Wi-Fi and stuff like that. All of that can be found on those apps. Another little hack is whether you travel a lot or just a couple times a year, TSA PreCheck and Nexus is something that I wish I got so much earlier. Just in the couple trips that I've used it, I found it to be so much faster and has actually saved me from missing certain flights. And another option is also Mobile Passport, which some airports have. And by having all of your info and stuff that is done on your phone through Mobile Passport, in some cases you can skip the line in some airports as well. Otherwise, that pretty much wraps it up for what is in my travel bag for 2019. I really hope you guys enjoyed it and make sure you leave some suggestions down below as to what you think I should bring on my bag. And I'll see you guys in the next video.